Hello, welcome to our service now GRC series. In this lecture, in this session, we are going to discuss the integrated risk management. Okay, in this session, we are going to discuss how the risk management is integrated with third party application or within a service now with different application like risk management, how associated with policy compliance. Okay, how the audit management is associated with risk management or any third party application or like in like to manage the risk through the OT tools as well. Okay, so we are managing and we are learning to for risk management, integrated risk management. I hope you already seen my last video. I hope I already you already watched the last sessions. In case you have any concern, any doubt, you can write me. I will be happy to help you. Okay, in this session we are purely talk about the risk management okay so let me quickly go to the another slide so basically what is integrated risk management as you can understand from the word integrated that means we are going to talk about the integration for risk management risk management is an application of a grc okay grc is a module of a service now so what does it mean governance risk and compliance this module contains the multiple applications like vendor management, audit management, policy, compliance management, okay, similar as a risk management. So, risk management is an application of GRC, and we are going to integrate that risk management to any third party application or within a ServiceNow applications to identify and analyze the risk and reduce the organization burden. So, something going to be happen, okay. So here in the definition, I have explained clearly, clearly that ServiceNow integration management. In short, we are saying the IRM. That means integrated risk management. So IRM is a central hub that allows an organization to collaborate and maintain the risk management processes. It's built on the Now platform. Basically, IRM is a central hub where we are managing the risk management processes. Okay which is work on the cloud and it's also include the multiple things like artificial intelligence and workflow engine to consolidate data from different sources consolidate data from different sources mean within a service now different application or any third party applications to analyze and streamline the workflow and give a comprehensive overview of the organizational risk landscape so let's let's assume risk management is associated to the policy management and in case this policy is not in compliant state, then sub, the, using the help of the indicator, we can analyze, we can identify that this is the risk event automatically cre create and uh, that this is not compliant so that we can fix that non-compliant policy before something went, something going to be wrong. Okay, so that means we are preventing the we are preventing and restricting the organizational loss before it happened okay so this is the main purpose of the risk management basically risk management application also continuously monitor to identify the high impact risk okay to improve the risk based decision making and re reduce the reaction time effect if effectively okay basically using the risk management what we are doing we are analyzing the risk the identifying the high impact risk and improve our decision making power and reduce the reaction or burden to the organization so that uh, we can control uh, any unhappened interruption in business before it happens okay this application also provides the structured workflow for the management of risk assessment risk indicator and the risk issues so basically what is risk assessment risk indicator and risk issues we are going to discuss but for now i am explaining for the understanding Risk assessment is a questionnaire which we are giving to the end user and on the basis of the end user answer we are analyzing the risk. Okay, risk indicator are useful when we are analyzing the risk and it automatically help uh, risk indicator help us to understand what is in compliant state, what is not in compliant state so that we can remediate the risk or we can take an appropriate action against every risk okay and risk issues are automatically created uh, we, if let's say in the risk issue i would like to share one example let's say if the cpu uh, is 80 more than 80 percent loaded then automatically one risk issue is created on the based on the risk event condition 
that this is 80% loaded anytime it can uh, fail okay it can uh, blast so we can manage before it going to be blast we can uh, increase the cpu power or we can handle it so basically such type of things we are handling in the risk issue so i hope you understand what is risk assessment risk indicator and the risk issues these are the basic terminology we are going to discuss in detail in next slide but hope you understand what is integrated risk management how the irm plays an important role in grc let's say i have a one another grc tool vmware okay and i am going to integrate grc with vmware if anything going to be happen in the vmware vmware is syncing the data and pulling the data to service now we are syncing through the integration and we are analyzing the risk on the based on the data so such type is called such type of functionality and implementation is possible through the irm and irm is not only used for the integrated any third party application it is also useful within a service now as well like we are integrating the risk management through the change management it is applicable through the integrated risk management we can integrate in audit management in policy management in compliance management in vendor management each and everything as per our business need we can integrate so that's the reason we are saying as a integrated risk management but the application is is the uh, risk management risk management is the application of the grc model i hope you understand i have tried very easy words to explain you what is integrated risk management okay so let me go to the another slide how the integrated risk solution provide the integration and power and building capabilities within a service now so as you can see the integration uh, integrated risk solution is integrated have a capability to integrate with policy and compliance regulatory changes digital and technology risk enterprises and operational risk audit management operational resilience operational resilience means the and operational resilience is a uh, inbuilt application of the service now but uh, here as you ask me for the ot operational uh, <coughs> technologies so the tools if uh, third party tools we can also manage the ot tools here and third party and vendor risk okay third party means any third party application which we are going to integrate with the risk management then business continuity environment social and governance and privacy these are the main things where we can within the service now we can use the risk management and you can see what are the different capabilities and the different flows where we can use in a now platform itself so we have a workflow and orchestration where we are using the risk management service catalog service portal subscription and notification contextual collaboration predictive analytics so believe me in predictive analytics we are using the artificial intelligence it is very useful tool when we are using the predictive analytics i will take a proper one session on a predictive uh, analytics how can we use the predictive analysis and how can we integrate irm with that and how this solution help organization in a wonderful way okay then we have a knowledge base service aware <coughs> cmdv virtual agent mobile application dashboard and reporting integration hub supervised machine learning visual task board ai artificial intelligence studio app creator and service now and we have a, as you know we have a single database model okay for all of this and we have multiple instances and secure and compliant and scalable scalable that is the reason we are using this cloud solution for the irm so the why we are using the irm for cloud service now the reason it has a capability to integrate with multiple application within a service now it also provide the multi capability to integrate third party application it also has a single data model for all things we have a multiple instance so we have a proper data uh, backup and it is more secure and compliance way and it is a scalable so the performance is very much good that is the reason we are using the irm okay what are the irm capabilities so i have just mentioned those capabilities here which are useful within a service now perspective okay or the main modules so in audit management irm help streamline audit processes prioritize audit management and improve the decision making okay so irm plays a very important role in audit management to streamline the process and prioritize the audit as per the priority and the standard so that business can so that the top management can take a proper decision okay in policy and compliance management in policy and compliance management irm also plays an important role to automate and manage policy life cycle and monitor for com policy compliance if you remember in last 
So let I have given you one example. Let's say there is a one policy which is not in compliance state. We can immediately take an action on that. So for the monitor and the compliance purpose, it is playing an important role in policy and compliance management. Risk management. Risk management is also plays an important role. That let's say in a VMware we have integrated, right? So it also help to identify the risk based on the data which we are pulling from the VMware or any third party application. Okay, it help to identify, analyze, and prioritize the high impact risk so that we can avoid any interruption in our ongoing business. Performance analytics. It also useful in a performance analytics with the risk management. We can use a use case accelerator. It also useful there. Virtual agent using the virtual agent risk management. We can. uh manage the risk indicators and the assessments using the virtual agents Predict, predictive intelligence predictive intelligence is one of the most wonderful thing which i like i will take a proper dedicated session on the predictive intelligence okay this is also useful and when uh, anything is going to be wrong uh, it help us to prevent it before it happen okay it's automatic based on the some terminology it it uh, automatically identify and uh, remediate the risk okay then we have a regulatory change management and operational resilience help also the risk management okay i hope you understand what are the different irm capabilities i am going to show you on my personal development instance as well so no need to worry but for now it is useful for most of the applications i did not mention all here but we also have a change management and others as well where we can use the irm capabilities now we have a service now grc approach so basically bypass approach is a smart approach which we are considering step by step in grc journey so the five steps i have mentioned here which we need to identify or which we need to uh, make sure when we are implementing any grc for any organization okay first step is risk register risk register means we need to define the risk and control requirement definition first step we need to define the risk and control requirement definition second is the applicability metric so we need to define the requirement applied to operating environment okay third we have a diagnostic capability where we can rapidly identify capabilities and potential gap and document findings fourth the deep dive assessments so we need to prepare the assessment so that actual control and rate risk of document policy exceptions these things we need to define okay assessments are most important and control testing testing with the evidence and sampling document remediation plan so these are the main five steps we need to take care while we are implementing the risk management or grc for any organization okay now we are going to talk about the different benefits of the irm okay so i hope and i am and i believe till now you are very much familiar what are the advantage of uh, the irm because i have explained everything but here again i have for the reference purpose i have put it we have a control of the risk exposure we have a improved enterprise wide decision making we have increased productivity and establishment ownership because every control owner is responsible for their control owner and the risk owner okay align and scale grc with your business goal okay we can align grc models with our business goals we can save and money and from the uh stakeholders buy in from stakeholders so these are the main key benefits of the irm now slowly we are going to the terminology of the risk management so what is risk event okay so basically risk event is a potential or actual financial and non financial losses near misses that gain occur within an organization risk events also known as a loss event or loss entries okay when any risk event occur that means Uh, we have a actual finance or non financial losses something happens to our business so we need to take immediate action on the risk events so that is the reason we are also calling risk event as a loss event or the loss entries in a service now risk management okay to effectively manage the risk it is essential okay to effect if we are need if we need to take care properly we need to take care of the risk management then it is essential to monitor risk events we need to must relate them to existing risk perform up root cause analysis and track the remediate task if any risk event occur then we need to immediately uh, perform the action and find out the root cause and we need to track track the remediable task organizational is use risk event to understand their losses and their manage the risk more efficiently 
so organization when any risk event occur organization needs to understand the loss if it is a minimum loss or whatever action they want to take we can they can plan accordingly and risk event do not only lead to losses okay that doesn't mean risk event is always be uh, lead to losses that is not sure okay at time risk events also result in gain also for organi organization for example in a banking industry if there is an error in a trading algorithm it might result in a gain for our organization but again sometime it is a gainful as well but that does not mean this event is good for our organization and not always bad for organization it depend what type of risk event is occurred i hope you understand what is risk event okay now what different type of risk event we have we have a two type of risk event actually first is a internal risk event second is a external risk event internal risk events they occur within our organization okay such type of uh, events are called as a uh, internal risk event and those events are occurred in other organizations but are impacted to the industry to ensure that other organization prevent them is called as a external risk event so concrete data that enable you to better quantify and validate in the existing risk and we have a visibility to into new because risk event also occur so for now no need to uh, confuse here we generally we have only two type of risk event if you remember this that is enough okay first is internal risk event which occurred within an organization and external risk event which occurred at the vendor side okay so you can understand this that is enough for the risk event side okay and make sure risk event is also uh, always not lead to the losses sometimes it is also lead the gain as well but you know risk event is also known as the loss events that means something went wrong with the entry okay i hope you understand the risk event do need do not need to worry i will share you this presentation pdf and other notes okay i have prepared a notes for you i will send you all these things but please currently you need to focus what i am going to explain because this terminology if clear then you are able to understand each and everything okay terminology should be clear risk what is risk event what is risk assessment indicator control so these things should be clear in policy that is the reason i have taken eight lectures and in deep lecture in policy management where i have explained you the controls control indicator control test okay and the i i have also uh, uh, policy exception so that is the reason i have tried to explain new very deep concept i am uh, sharing with a detailed deep concepts okay so please try to understand the concept which i am trying to explain okay so now i am going to the another slide which is the risk event life cycle okay as you know every every table generally every application has their own life cycle similar risk event also has the own life cycle so it is start from the creating a risk so first step creating a risk event that means the event is reported by the business user and the event is pending for the validation by the event owner or the risk manager who has the risk manager role okay so how the risk event is created generally risk event is reported by the business user or we can create it manually as well but that risk event need to be validated from the risk manager who is the risk manager the person who has a risk manager role is that clear i hope you are clear with the how we are creating the risk event second step analyzing the risk event this is a risk manager responsibility to analyze and legitimate and add all the important information to the event and take it as a proper analyzing third is the awaiting approval for the risk event okay so here in this state all data is entered and validated and risk manager may request the event to be approved and determine the threshold by the organization okay then approving rejecting or cancelling the event so it is the top level responsibility top management needs to approve or reject whatever action they want to take they can take it or closing a risk event okay closing a risk event means uh one after a user with the sn risk manager role is uh, certain the event has been captured and the rc has need to be close the event if everything is going to be perfect okay i believe you understand what is life cycle the life cycle of the risk event so first creating a event analyzing the event waiting for the approval approving rejecting the event or taking a proper action on the event okay 
so this is the main life cycle of the risk event now we are going to the another slide where i am going to explain the different type of users or their roles okay so here you can see in this slide we have a risk event creator okay so first the business user is creating the risk event okay so business user is creating the risk event okay so the person is called a risk event creator any service now user can create a risk event using the service now portal okay we have a using the service now portal we can create a risk event even from the classic view also we can create the event then risk manager needs to analyze the risk or needs to approve the risk okay or provide the proper data and validation then after the risk manager is responsibility to user request approve uh, to send for a approval for the event and risk event approval needs to approve reject or cancel the event as per their understanding and after all risk manager at the end need to open all issues and task and close the event and analyze the dashboard for the tracking purpose okay so first step risk event creator risk event uh, manager and then approver then closer again manager needs to close okay then what is indicator okay indicator is same which is applicable for uh, policy compliance risk and everywhere i just put it here for the reference okay i already explained this topic so i am not going to uh, um, uh, invest so much time on this topic i already explained this indicator in my uh, policy uh, policy lectures okay but again indicator are useful when we want to know if organization is compliant or not okay for the audit purpose they plays a very important role okay and if certain controls are non compliant state then indicator help us to identify them and enable you to correct them using the indicator we are monitor and analyzing the controls if any control is not in compliant state it automatically create a issue for non compliant controls it create a issue so end issue assigned to the control owner and control owner need to take a proper action on that okay this is the main use of the indicator what type of indicator we have we have a manual indicator basic indicator indicator and the scripted in manual indicator are used for data that cannot be retrieved from a service now instance because it come from external system such as customer or any third party basic indicator as automatic indicator based on the indicator score okay and scripted we are uh, using the custom script to collect the data and uh, run the indicator okay now we have a checklist to implement the irm okay so first wh what we need to do we need to define the use a risk admin role the person who is the this is the highest role in the risk management the person who has a risk admin role can define and modify the risk criteria configure the risk properties create the risk assessment modify the existing assessment assign the roles okay then second step the user with the risk admin role can also assign the roles to the others risk manager with the risk role needs to manage numerous risk statement to achieve the goals user the person who has role you can see it so this uh, this risk administrator also define the risk assessment as well and they can create the indicators as well so So this is the main checklist of for the while we are implementing the risk management. I will share you this uh, checklist with you so so that whenever you have a time, sometimes interviewer can ask you during the implementation what was your checklist, what was your steps which you used to implement the risk management. So so when any interviewer is going to ask you, you you need to explain and you need to express in the real time scenario that hey we we define the role structure we define the audience we define the risk framework everything you need to define this event controls everything okay irm with other application okay so as i told you irm is application applicable with other application outside the grc obviously we are working with a project risk assessment in the ppm okay under the workflow of the project risk assessment we can configure the ppm and the projects and integrate the risk assessment there to complete the project risk life cycle using the project risk assessment capability as well okay this is the outside the grc within a service now okay 
then i have a use case for the grc and project portfolio management where it is useful so let's say is there any organization which have a multiple project some project are complex and some project are the less complex so risk management of complex project may be aligned to iso 31000 risk assessment standard complex project require various activities such as risk identification assessment response monitoring okay so project portfolio management and advanced uh, risk assessment support the risk assessment for the project risk such type of real time scenario we can achieve outside the grc within a service now application through the integrated risk management okay now the question is come how can we create the risk okay so we can create the risk there are two way we can create the risk through the manually and automatically as well automatically if any event is occur we can create the risk okay uh, through the you know through the business rule we can create or the flow designer or based on certain condition we can create the risk but i am here i am going to talk about the manual process from the left side navigation bar we need to search the risk library and we can create the risk statements here here okay we in create the risk means we are talking about the creation of the risk statements so we can create the risk statements so first before going to a statement i would like to say, uh, clear you one thing first we need to create the risk framework okay after that we need to define the risk statements then we need to define the controls and control indicators and their result and risk okay i hope you understand the mapping first what we are doing in the risk library we need to define the framework after that each uh, we need to create the statement each risk statement is associated with the risk framework okay so when any of the following statement field name description reference category these are the basic information attestation we need to provide while we are creating the risk i will show you on my personal development inst instance how we are creating the risk okay now what are the default score form so these are the default score form like inherent sle residual sle inherent aro and residual aro that means impacted that the event inherent sle is impacted that the event has the organization either no control to check the event inherent sle that means there is no control is associated to the event residual sse that there are controls to check the event okay so there are some controls are associated which needs to check the event inherent aro that means no control to check the event or residual aro that means event occurring if there are control to check the event okay this is the default score form we can also modify expected ale that means the product of the annual rate of the occurrence are single loss expectancy and expected ale is expected value of the ale in the risk statement sum of the calculate it is the total sum it's a basic terminology definition you can uh, read it okay i will show you in a real time scenario so these are the maximum calculated ale what is the maximum acceptable ale actual loss expectancy okay and the minimum calculated ale and the calculated score then we have a uh, create risk i have already discussed with you ha huh, risk assessment okay so as i if you remember my first uh, slide what is risk assessment risk assessment is the questionnaire which organization is set up for the end user and they need end user need to answer that and on the basis of the answer on the basis of the answer we are defining the risk level and the risk score for the particular vendor okay so such type of questionnaire is called a risk assessment okay in the vendor management i will show you how it is going to be useful okay and here as well i will show you how can we define the assessment so there are two method to calculate the risk of a change the best practice is change risk calculator which is activated in a base system by default so risk change risk calculator is automatically by default to be available in our system which we can use to calculate the risk and risk assessment is an optional okay so risk change risk calculator uses predefined properties and condition to calculate a risk value because this is a out of the box functionality so we do not need to configure so much but we can have a capability to configure if we want we can do it change management okay in change management let's say risk assessment is information provided by the end user okay to assess a risk value okay so the the method used individually or together depending on the requirement if the method are used together the highest risk value from both method is always selected okay so 
it is a flexible way to capture the information from the end user to calculate the risk of the associated change request and we can define the risk assessment questions for any change request okay so this is the diagram risk assessment is calculated risk risk calculator calculated risk highest risk and we can change request risk okay we can create a task okay calculated risk score calculated risk score is a probability of the definition is responsible to set the risk okay generally is impact plus success probability impact plus change change success score impact plus change model success okay so basically do not confuse with this this requires a separate plugin actually separate uh, separate domain separation is needed for this and the this is the change probability risk lookup table is uh, processed separately we need to install so you can skip this slide if you want so now i am going to uh, uh, i am going to log in my personal development instance to show you how can we create the risk how can we create the risk framework how can we map each and other things and how can we integrate with any third party application so thank you so much and i believe you enjoyed and you understand the risk management okay now i am going to land my personal development instance so i have logged in on my personal development instance okay here we are going to discuss the risk management or the integrated risk management or whatever we have learned in our presentation in the theoretical session okay so if, if still you did not install the grc plugin first you need to install the grc plugin on your personal development instance and once you enable the grc plugins after that you will be able to see the all respective applications within a service now platform in a right left side navigation bar you need to search the risk okay when you search for a risk then under the uh then uh, in navigation bar you are able to see all risk related applications so first as you can see you can see the risk events because it is showing on top because i already set it the risk event uh, in my favorite list that is the reason this is showing here so if you remember the risk events so i told you what is risk event basically risk event is uh, the actual loss okay or the it's a happening loss we are calling as a loss but it is not always happening the losses sometimes it is also uh, pro giving the profit as well okay but generally we are calling as a loss event or the loss entries okay so the risk events are created manually okay or automatically based on the conditions so here in the risk events uh, we can see the overview if i click on the overview it will route me to the out of the box dashboard where i can control all risk events and track the risk events status okay so here in the event summary you can see i can uh, in this out of the box dashboard i can see the gross loss what is the gross loss net loss events active events near miss or event by type event by state the status each and every status i can track it the financial impact what are the top 10 loss entities what are the top 10 financial impact and what are the top 10 with highest number of losses so each and everything we can track through this out of the box dashboard but we can configure this as per our business requirement as well we can modify the dashboard or the reporting uh, as well okay so we can do it in the additional reporting we can also see the close risk event by causes and each and everything related to the reporting we can track through here okay we can also have a different proper dedicated dashboard for the entity wise as well let's say in your instance you you have a five or ten entities like you can track through the entity wise as well so we have same dashboard for the entity wise let's say if i am selecting any entity here i am saying window mobile entity and if i apply it it is showing only those losses those details which are related to the window mobile entity so if we have multiple entities we can use this out of the box as well in quarter one what is the loss in quarter second each and everything we can track here and in the same application we can see how many new events we have okay how many new events we have in our instance we can check currently i have a one integrated risk event okay so the prefix is ire we can say the uh, the name of this uh, the unintentionally physical damage to the equipment this is a financial impact okay 
impacted entity is window mobile so if you want to see the risk event cycle if you remember i told you the first step is creating the risk event that means the business user can report a risk okay then it will go to the risk, risk manager to approve or validate the risk or analyze the risk then we have a waiting approval then approve then close or reject so if you can see the currently this state is a new state then we have a analyze state that means the person risk manager need to analyze then awaiting approval then approve or close or reject the risk so this is the entire risk form it is containing who is open this is a karen jambo he is the business user who open the risk which entity is impacted primary entity is window mobile is going to be impacted owning group is the risk manager okay it is the financial impact we can see the financial impact non financial impact it is the finance it this risk contain the financial impact we can set the date and we can also define the loss and gain estimation okay what is the loss and what is the gain we gain so we can define here what is the expected loss and what is the potential loss event analysis credit mark risk and additional classification if we want to give we can do and in summary we need to provide the what is the direct amount additional cost and activity so the main thing you need to remember here the main thing you need to remember the entity which is going to be trigger and the issue triggers okay so this issue is triggered for this entity so this issue need to be resolved first who is the approver you can track it and the risk event entries as well the main thing you should remember here the cycle of the risk event so risk event cycle is first the creating a risk that means the business user creating or reporting the risk state is new analyze means the risk manager is going to analyze the risk it is valid or not then they will send for the approval risk manager needs to approve or reject the list after that if it is approved then we can take it appropriate action then close or reject the risk whatever action we are taking okay so let's say here in this case i am analyzing the risk i click on the analyze because i am the uh, like a risk or manager is the owning group so if i click on the uh, analyze you can see it goes to the next stage which is the analyze if i click on the request approval that means it will go to the approval so user needs to approve it so you can see now it is awaiting approval so who needs to approve you can see in the approver section in the in the related list in the related list there is uh, no approver is associated with this so we do not need to worry here and uh, you can see state is automatically approved the reason is this because uh, the reason is this because uh, there is no approver is associated to this uh, to this risk event you can see approve there is no approver that is the reason it's automatically approved and after that after the approving what action we need to do we need to reanalyze that means if we want to reanalyze or we want to close or cancel it okay we can take the appropriate action okay and now catalin retager is the owner of this risk okay now catalin if i will let's say if i am going so if uh, now i can close the risk or reject the risk okay it is it is depending upon the action of the approver okay currently there is no approver that is the reason it is already in approved state okay i think uh, i hope it is clear to you with the cycle of the life cycle of the risk event okay you can see this is already in approved state the reason is this there is no approver is associated with this if the approver is associated with this then uh, we need to uh, the approver needs to approve it if we need to reanalyze then we can reanalyze if we want to close then we can close if i click on close this risk automatically will close okay you can see uh, now the risk is going to be closed state you can see the risk is already closed so we can define i just show you the cycle how the life cycle of the risk event is going on so this is the basic cycle but we need to evaluate lot of event score summary confidential information and additional information we need to provide during the working of the risk event i hope you understand how the risk events are working similar we can see how many items we have rejected if i click on the rejected events there is no event which we rejected so that's why it is showing an empty if i will see all events that means it will show the all events which are available in my instance so currently 
there is only one uh, risk event is available which i just created if i want to create the another i can click new this is the manual process we are creating the risk event so let's say this is risk uh, this is uh, risk event demo for joseph okay so i just i'm just uh, i need to select the entity so uh, let's say if i am looking which entity i want this is impacting with this risk so i am saying account payable is going to be impact okay and uh, just uh, basic information i am providing like dates what will be the dates gain and loss let's say it is showing the 10000 uh, loss okay and event analysis like cause if i want to define any cause or the description in this risk event this is demo okay we can define anything but for now for the testing i just create the risk okay i just create the new risk event you can see the risk event is created and the state is in new state and similar we need to follow the cycle analyze the waiting approval approve and the close if i see again all okay you can see then another risk is in new state earlier we close the risk which primary entity is the window mobile is we have closed it i hope you understand how the risk event is working Similar, every risk event also contain the task. I'm not going to show you the task. And similar, we have a issues. If any risk event is causes and generating the issues, we can also manage the issues. In policy lifecycle lecture, I have already shown you how the issues are useful. Same process, issues are working and helping here to work on. Okay, it is not different behavior. For issues are behaving same like a policy and compliances which we already discussed. I properly explain each and everything of the issues also have a same life cycle new analyze respond review and close okay and the control owner need to take a action on the issue uh, on the respected uh, even non-compliance state okay so now i am going to uh, i have already explained you this issue and uh, uh, issue and uh, the risk event now we are coming to the main important part which is the advanced risk management okay in advanced risk management we need to understand the risk register okay so what is risk register risk register is the library where we are storing our all risk and we are defining our risk strategies risk methodologies okay and if you if you remember in the presentation i have explained you the risk standard statements how can we create the risk statement okay so first we need to create the risk statement or the risk framework okay so in the risk library in the risk library you can see we have a risk framework and the risk statement so first i am going to explain the risk framework first i am going to explain you the basic corporate risk which i already created for my personal development instance so every risk framework has a unique prefix which is start from rfr rfr means risk framework okay and the unique number it is active risk framework which is the corporate risk okay and risk and uncertainties that may have a material adverse effect on our business i mean description you can provide it every risk framework contain the entities which entity it entity is it is going to be impact and this is the mapping and then the risk statement okay every so let me open the paint to explain you in a proper way this is this mapping is most important and you need to understand this mapping okay see every risk framework risk risk framework okay risk framework is associated with risk framework is associated with risk entities okay risk entities and the risk risk entities and risk statement so risk entities entities risk entities means how many entities it is going to be impacted then we have a risk frame a risk statement okay how many risk statements are associated to the risk risk entities means here are a multiple entities like one company is operating in a different a different region or like different entities we have so we have a let's say assume we have a, a like a, then one apac entry entity then we have a emia entry then we have a latum entities these entities are going to be impacted with one framework 
and the risk statement contains the like uh, like uh, um, uncertainty uncertainty okay uncertainty in business and then we have a natural disaster okay natural disaster so any type of risk statements are involved in a risk framework so i hope you understand the mapping each risk framework contain the multiple risk statements okay now again go to the instance and here i am showing this is a corporate risk is the risk framework which contain the multiple risk statements you can see multiple risk statements are associated six Six, six statements are associated to this and this is an entity type that means one entity is going to be impacted if we want to create a new risk framework then we can create a new risk framework but the question is here who can create a risk framework the person who has a risk underscore admin role so i am writing here risk underscore the person who is a risk underscore admin role can create a risk framework okay those can create a risk framework here if i click on the new okay because i am an admin of my platform so if i click on the new i just need to provide the name let's say i am creating a one risk is a triguma corporations triguma corporations okay i created this and i just save this okay now risk framework we have created now we need to map the entities how many entities is going to be impact okay let's say in this entity i am adding a one entity which going to be impacted from this risk framework and i am mapping the entities so let's say data center i am adding the data centers okay so i am adding data centers here and i just save it okay so if i save it you can see now Triguma corporations impacted only the data center entity and I also add the risk statements. If I want to add the multiple statement or the single statements, we can add it. We can also add the multiple entities with associated and mapped with a single framework. Okay. But here I am adding the like a bad air quality or the availability of training content. I am adding these two risk statements. So now you can see these items are associated to this. And if you see the risk framework and you can see the Triguma corporations are created as a framework and the entities are mapping. Now coming to the second point is the risk statements. Risk, risk statement is also be having the same. It has a mapping with the framework and the categories. So we need to define when we are creating a risk statement. We need to give the proper name who is the parent. We need to define the framework category if any assessment we can define the assessment or the default score roll up and the ownership ownership i mean who is the responsible for that risk statement it also contain the child risk statement which entity is going to be impacted and risk and the control objective if is there any okay so basically this is just a basic information asking so if i would like to create a one risk statement we can also create a risk statement and i i will map my risk statement to my new created framework okay so i click on the new okay and this is a risk statement mapping demo for joseph okay here i am defining the framework as triguma because I have created the Triguma corporations, you can see category is the financial category, Re issue group rule is the group by risk owner, and this is demo. Okay, and default score I am setting as like 100, uh, ARO is 0, residual ARO is 0, expected, expected ALE is 100, ownership. Now, ownership is the most important. I need to define the owner here. Let's say I am de defining myself as a system admin is the owner. So, uh, so I am checking system admin is available or not. Let me check it. So, no, I need to check the users. So, able tutor and Catalin is the user. So, I am selecting as the able tutor here and just submit it. Okay. So, I have created one risk statement and I mapped with the expected ALE must be less than or equal to the maximum acceptable ALE. Okay, so invalid insert. 
So expected ALE here we need to define expected ALE. Expected ALE is less than so that's in we are defining is a 10 and I am just saving this. Sorry, oh maximum ALE. Oh sorry, sorry, my bad. Maximum ALE is zero. So maximum ALE we need to define as a 50. Now I believe it will save allow to save this. Save this record. You can see the risk statement is created. Item generation has been initiated. This process may take some time. Risk framework entity relationship will be created. You can see framework and entity relationship will be created, which we already took it. You can see risk is associated. This is a risk statement is created with this. Okay. This is a New York data center is created. Entity type is the data center. You can see there is a no child statement. So I hope you understand how the risk framework and risk statement and entities mapping is going on. Okay. This is the important mapping. So what we discussed till now, we have discussed, now I am writing here, we have discussed risk event, okay, we have discussed risk uh, framework, we have discussed risk uh, statement and the entities, then mapping, okay, these points we have discussed till now, okay, now I am going to, I am going to explain you the another more most important topic of the risk, which is, uh, let me show you the risk assessment. Okay, entities I have already shown. Now I am go, uh, we need to understand the assessment. So assessment is the question arise. Okay, assessment is the question arise. So in the indication, I risk identifications in the um, yeah <coughs> sorry so now we come to the point on the risk so risk also has their portal okay risk has their own portal similar like a support portal where end user needs to perform the assessments or reporting the uh, issues or events okay so this portal is called as a risk portal we can configure the risk portal similar as i shown you in the fundamental in fundamental, we are configuring the portal and designing the portal through the widget, CSS, HTML. Same things we can design the portal uh, as per our business need. Okay. So, this is how we are uh, carrying. And this portal is called as a risk portal. Here we can see the pending task is 3. Uh, 168 items are in queue and we can create report the risk event. If we want to report any risk event, how many steps I have told you? There are two ways to report a risk event. First is a manual way. I already showed risk event reporting. Risk event reporting. First is manual. Okay. Manual pro manual. Second is second is by a portal. By a portal. Okay. So through the portal we can report the risk. If you want to report any risk, I can click here. It will open the form and it will create a risk. Okay. So through this portal, we can also take appropriate actions. So we component is not configured for now, but we can configure it uh, like it is loaded now. So like it is a financial type, it's just a catalog form, whatever type of risk like this is event testing via portal. Okay. Uh, risk event creation. Okay. And I just uh, going to be create, I just submit for review. Okay, uh, which entity is going to be impacted? So let's say account payable is going to be impacted. I just submit for review. Then in the review state, who will who will review? The person who is uh, who having a manager role can review this. You can see in in personal development instance, if you if you you would like to see the risk event is created or not, then you can see the new events. If you click on the new event, you can. uh i think something went wrong yeah here here you can see this is testing via portal so this is created okay this is for the account payable this risk is created through the risk portal similar we can create the risk generally risk are reporting through the portal and the person having a proper role of business user can report through the classic way okay now coming to the risk coming to the risk yeah, risk portal I have shown you. Similar, we have a risk workspace. 
the workspace is a place where we can work on all risk materials risk items risk issues through the single place okay so this is similar as the itsm workspace uh, is we also have a risk workspace where we can configure we also have a capability to design the workflow to and to configure the workflow as per our business need okay so you can see it is loaded the overview how many tasks we have what are the group tasks entity wise we can see the list as well what is the list according to the list we can find out uh, whatever the things uh, we can see here and we can also configure we have a capability to configure the this framework as well like in my entities risk control engagement risk event okay in the risk library what are the risk framework everything we can configure through the risk management okay now uh, we can also identify the risk but here i would like to uh, i would like to show you the risk this thing we have discussed already and i am not going to so deep risk library i have discussed now the most important thing is risk assessment which i need to show you so under the risk register under the risk register we have a assessment option so we can see the assessments are playing an important role for entity wise you can see currently for the acme inc we have a one assessment and the assessment is start with irs okay this is the prefix and for the grc perspective so this is assigned to fred lodi okay this is assigned to fred lodi and we can see the assessment question arise so this is the assessment question arise ready to take okay state is ready to take and these are the questions which we configured here okay source table is this in this source table we are configuring the questions like what is the potential impact to the employee productivity what is the potential health and safety impact so we can questions we can put here okay and we also can the user response if we want to see the user response we can also see the user response here you can see there is a no response currently because it was not taken so we can see the response from here okay let's say if i copy this so here we can create the assessments and we can assign to the respected user and they can uh, answer the questions and see the answer okay so let's say for the testing purpose i am going to create a one new assessment okay which will help you to understand how can we create the assessment okay so we are in the grc attestation view let me change the view as a default view first okay this is the default view now i am creating a new assessment okay i click on a new okay so here and new record is not allowing here but if uh, let me say uh, so uh, sorry my bad actually we need to go in the administration the assessment types okay in the assessment type we have a option risk assessment designer so we need to open the risk assessment designer okay in risk assessment designer we can design the risk okay it is loading it is taking a few seconds to load it so here we can drag and drop and we can design the uh, assessment so let's say if you want to attach anything we can create a new attachment if any boolean thing we can date if any choice we can set as a choice if we have a date we set as a date or a string okay and name we have given the new risk assessment demo for joseph okay so i just uh, save and publish okay i just save and publish once we save and publish then it will be visible okay that means publish means it is visible and it is in public state everyone can see this uh, this assessment okay so if we want to see the preview then we can click on preview and it will generate the preview for our assessment you can see the assessment is ready the preview is ready we can test it if you want like if i am adding anything it will allow us to add it okay and if i click on okay it it, it is showing the preview so just it, we can see the preview 
so this is how we can create the this is how we can create the assessments okay this is the way to create the assessment okay so main assessment is created but we can also load the questions so we can click on the questions and in the questions we can add the questions or let's say what is your name okay let's say what is your name anything we can add it like question questionize we can add it through here okay uh, first let me allow the edit then categories questions controls like in questions we are creating the new category in questions it is not showing but let me reload it maybe something refresh if it will refresh questions we also can uh, add through the this assessment designer okay and once question is uh, ready then we can uh, grant to the users okay so let me go to the questions uh categories it is not showing let me check through here and it is, is not going to be inducted uh joseph 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 it is not also visible here but uh, i mean questions we can also add here i am missing something here um but i will show you how can we add the uh, uh, questions okay so this is how we can create the assessments and we have a different type of assessment types which i already show you like assessment designer we can create it so ah this is here you can see new risk assessment demo for joseph this is visible here in the metric type new uh, risk assessment demo for joseph so if i click here you can see it is already created we can define the assessment duration okay what is the duration it is already in a published state okay and if we want to uh, uh, this add any category or accessible record to anyone so we can use it and we can take appropriate actions for this okay and 1854 records are matching with the condition because we did not apply any condition it is saying only active is true okay so this is how we are defining and creating the assessments okay we also define the surveys as well okay so in case we need to define any survey we can show the survey currently we do not have any active survey at the moment now at the end i need to show you the risk administration or uh, risk uh, risk the last thing i want i would like to share with you the risk yeah under the risk administration we have a choices okay in choices we can define the like what is happen yeah. so we have a risk statements or choices we can define like a category financial losses operations choices we can manage through the here risk criteria and the issues rating you can see the risk criteria is impact that means very high we can manage the risk criteria and configure under the risk administration then we have a issue rating we can manage the issue rating as well here then we have a grc properties as well if you want to configure any properties you can see we can configure the properties then we have a question bank that means the questions bank which we are pulling uh, in a assessment then we have a assessment types what type of assessments we are creating okay different type of assessments we have then we have a issue group rule or the entity tire issue group roles i mean who is owning the group group by risk owner entities we can define and the risk acceptance criteria also we have so we can also take a risk acceptance criteria as well then risk aggregate risk reporting aggregate risk reporting if you want to aggregate any risk report we can do it similar similar in advanced grc dashboard we have a dashboard capability to do it now you can see in the dashboard overview we can take take a control of the entire total controls compliant control non compliant controls business criticality so what we discussed we discussed the risk risk assessment okay and types okay 
and the risk administration okay risk administration these things we have discussed now question come to know how it is useful in a irm okay so now you confuse i i believe you confuse that we are just discuss the risk not a irm okay that is not the matter of confusion okay because risk management when we are using risk management in policy it called as a integrated risk management because it is interacting risk management is interacting to the another application which is a policy it's called a integrated risk management similar any third party integration we are using then it is called any third party tool it is also called a integration risk now let me go to show you the integration here integration if we have any integration like integration registry in the policy exception okay for the incident management or not this one in the risk management we have a risk event we have a integration configuration integration configuration that means we are currently uh, uh, not uh, this is the integration from the incident table we are using the risk okay of using the integration hub we can set up a connection between any third party application okay and we can use risk management to that application is called a integrated risk management hope you understand that means if the risk management i am again repeating risk management is interacting with any third party application or any other application is called a integrated risk management okay so now i am so now i am giving you the homework homework create risk framework framework and mapped with entities and statements okay then what then what you need to do create risk event via portal then create risk assessment then create risk questionnaire okay questionnaire so these things you need to do it as a homework okay and in in the risk in the irm in the irm if any in the irm what is happening in irm if risk is communicating communicate communicating with any application with any application like policy and any third party application is called as irm okay so please do not confuse with this and you need to complete this homework in case any doubt in a demo please let me know i will be happy to help you okay and i believe you understand how to do it i have explained you and demonstrated you each and everything through the demonstration thank you so much